Hello, my friends. Wanted to share today a food that our family is eating. And there's kind of a fun story behind it. And we wanted just to let you know about it in case it's not one you know about. This is common milkweed. We talked about the winter stalks of these and how to identify them and how useful they are. There's still some of those winter stalks right here. The fiber by this time of the year is still usable in some of them. Stunningly beautiful. The fibers themselves have kind of an iridescent white pearlish color. This is sometimes mistaken for dogbane. Dogbane is going to have very different winter stalks. They're going to be reddish. And the fiber is going to peel off in long strips rather than thin pieces like this. Milkweed is also very downy. On the bottom of these leaves, you're going to find a soft fluff. And the stems, though it's not apparent at first, are kind of rounded square. They have flat sides, on two sides at least. So unlike the dogbane that is round, these guys when you feel it in your fingers and you take a closer look, you're going to see that the stem has a squarish quality to it. Again, this is not necessarily apparent when you just look at it. You have to get up close and feel it. And then you're going to feel that squarish stem. Here are the flower buds. This is the part we're after today. When we harvest these, I'm not going to gather them right now, but I'm going to take them down at the base of the flower bud and bring them home. Of course, anytime you harvest any part of this plant, it's going to bleed a milky white latex. Another distinguishing characteristic, but so does the dogbane. These are just bordering on getting too big to harvest. You can start to see the color getting into them. When they're about this size and still green. That's when I think of them as perfect. Again, just cut it off right there. You're going to find milkweed along roadsides. You're going to find it in farmer's fields. You're going to find it in gardens. It grows in colonies and it usually is pretty successful. So you don't have to worry too much about over harvesting, except that there's a very important thing to remember. And that is that this is the host plant for the monarch butterfly. If you're not familiar with the monarch, it is a beautiful, beautiful creature and it has a yearly migration. It flies from up here in Wisconsin all the way down to Mexico where it overwinters and everywhere in between. I believe it even goes further north. So all through the United States you have this incredible animal that makes this long migration and is a real treasure and its population is declining. So it really, really depends on the milkweed. It's kind of a fun story with milkweed because when I grew up interested in foraging and I would read really any edible plants book, including actually Tom Brown's, which is interesting. There is a reference that is repeated over and over and over. And this reference is that common milkweed is borderline toxic. It's extremely bitter. And the only way to get that bitterness out is through repeated boilings. And if you boil it, empty out the water, boil it again, then you will get this, well, if not palatable, at least an edible plant. Now, forager extraordinaire Samuel Thayer, he was out one day gathering, I'm not sure if I'm going to tell this story exactly right, but I'll do my best. He was out gathering milkweed and he took it home and he boiled it and went through the process and thought, oh, I just don't taste any bitterness in this. I wonder if I can cut back from three boilings to two boilings. So he tried cutting back to two boilings and found that it still was not bitter. He subsequently cut back to one boiling. And then 
eventually started to think, maybe I'm just going to go out and taste this right off the raw plant because it doesn't seem to have any bitterness to it. And he tasted it, no bitter. I can attest to this, having tasted it hundreds and hundreds of times and taught many wild food walks and classes where I take people out and have people taste it. Nobody finds this to be bitter. Now there's some discussion as to whether there are regional differences or something else, maybe crossbreeding, hybridization with other milkweed species that causes some milkweed to be bitter. But at least in our area, milkweed is not bitter. Now Samuel Thayer is an excellent researcher and he went back and he found the initial reference for this idea that milkweed was so bitter and had to be boiled over and over. And this came from Yule Gibbons. If you haven't heard of Yule Gibbons, he popularized foraging some decades ago and was famously in the Grape Nuts commercial. Tastes just like wild hickory nuts. And he wrote this and described the process for making the milkweed edible. And then it seems that book after book after book, author after author, basically just parroted what he wrote without going out and tasting the plant themselves. So that is a lesson right there in remembering that even if you cite multiple sources, experts, in multiple sources, there's nothing like real world experimentation and experience. Believing things just because we've been told, not always the best idea. If you decide to go and harvest these yourself, you are in for a treat. These are excellent as a topping on pizza. We put them into stir fries, they go into soups. They have a unique texture, a gentle, delicious flavor, sauteed in butter, there's a myriad of uses for these. Just a great addition this time of year to your diet. But remembering that we must think about our friends, the monarchs, when we harvest this vegetable. So I'm going to show you what you want to look for to make sure that your plant that you're going to harvest is not playing host for one of these incredible animals. We met a friend recently and she taught us this. Okay, so we're looking for a moon-shaped cutout? Yeah. So when the egg hatches, the first thing the caterpillar does is it eats its eggshell. And then it eats around the eggshell, around itself in the shape of a moon so it doesn't drown in the milk. Try looking up high to see if you can find it in the top. Oh, Did it's you find him? so cute. They like those um, really oh, tender mama. leaves at the top when they're little. <laughs> oh, you found one too. Did you find oh, one, Lily? Oh, I didn't even look at them. Like, the dog's even tinier than mine. So Mom, wow. So what do you think of that, Lily Anna? Wow. That's awesome. Well, they're very distinctive looking. And obviously, you might find bigger ones. These get pretty big. Also note that there's the chrysalis and that's going to be green with kind of beautiful gold on it. That green chrysalis is obviously another indication that this is being used as a host plant. Finally, notice how the flower buds come in bunches. So you can be kind to the plant and to the monarchs by just harvesting one bunch from a non-host plant and then moving on, making sure that your next plant isn't a host for some butterflies and then harvesting one bunch from that plant. All right, my friends, share with me if you've tried these milkweed flower buds and if so, what you think of them. And if you want, you know, toss a recipe down in there or otherwise just share how you prepare them or similar plants. It's always good to learn from fellow foragers how we make these foods up. I cannot wait to see what you have to say in the comments. All right, love to you all.